Hello everybody and welcome to our Wednesday night quiz. It's been such a beautiful day today, it's been really lovely. So I hope you've been able to get outside and um, enjoy the sunshine and uh, and be out on your bikes or in the garden or doing whatever you're doing, in, uh, but keeping a safe distance away from everybody as well. Mrs Johnson has given me the usual list of things um, to um, tell you about. So the first thing on the list that she sent me is about your medals for the VE Day parade. And she's asked me if you can get them pictures of them to her by um, lunchtime on Friday, please. And she's going to put together a parade on um, about five o'clock on the Facebook page. So that would be that'd be amazing because if it's anything like the sheep horse, that they were just fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to that. She's also asked me if you can send any more of your photographs of, or anything that you've been doing um, for the VE Day. So whether it's the garden, um, growing your own things, what, whatever you've done, any pictures, posters, that kind of thing. She'd like to see those, please. So you can you can send her those. And the third thing that she wants me to remind you about is our beautiful banner that's been um, tied onto the railings outside the school if you want to go and um, if you're if you're on a walk and you walk past um, please don't just go um, especially to look at it because that wouldn't be the right thing to do but if you're um, if you're walking past school you go that way around because I know some of you do then please have a little look because um, there's a beautiful banner that's been painted by some of the children who have been in school and some of the staff as well and it's tied onto the outside so and she said if you want to take a picture of that and then send that into her as well um, she can pop that onto the page too and she would also, and I would also as well, like to uh, thank everybody um, for your lovely comments that you sent. Um, we put together a little um, video of us, um, our little message this, this morning that went onto the Facebook page saying that we missed you. And even though you weren't in school, we were still thinking about you. So um, and lots of you enjoyed looking at that. I know you did. And you sent some lovely comments. Um, so that's that's been really positive. So thank you very much. For that, um, Mrs. Johnson also popped on um, some of the words that we look at for our character learning, and today was um, optimism, and that's quite a quite a difficult thing to feel at the moment, isn't it? Optimism. Um, so, if any of you have got any um, feelings about that, or any things that you've been um, thinking about how you can feel positive, then if you can share those as well. And I was feeling a little bit more optimistic today when I've heard the news, but hopefully, hopefully on Sunday, there might be a little bit of good news about us being able to maybe move around a little bit more and, and meet some more family and friends. So we've got to stay optimistic um, and really positive. OK, so we've got our five rounds again tonight. The second round is our picture round. And that should be, um, that's the links on the Facebook page. And it's also at the bottom of um, um, down in the in the comments box at the bottom, you can click on that. And today, that is all about landmarks around Colville. So um, some of you might have been having a little look at that already, and then and we'll do that in the second round. Okay, so the first one, because um, I know some of you were asking Mrs. Johnson about the picture behind me, and that is a picture, um, a map of the moon. So the first round we're going to um, do is all about space and, and stars and that kind of thing. So if you're ready to go, remember no Googling and we will begin. So number one, this is a question about the film, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy films. And who is the leader? What is the name of the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy? Not the, not the name of the actor that plays him, but the actual name of the, the character. Who is the leader? Okay, number question number two. This one is especially for Mr. Skinner. In Star Wars, what type of species is Chewbacca? So there's a big furry thing called Chewbacca. And what type of species is Chewbacca? Question number three. What is the sixth planet from the sun? The sixth planet from the sun. Okay. 
Question number four. What is an exoplanet? What is an exoplanet? Or where would you find an exoplanet? Question five. If someone asks to be beamed up in Star Trek, which equipment would be used for this? So if somebody said, um, beam me up, would they be wanting a replicator, a holodeck, or a transporter? What type of equipment would you need to be beamed up? A replicator, a holodeck, or a transporter? I think Mr. Skinner will prefer these questions to the Disney princess questions, if I'm honest. So. Right, question number six. Jim Lovell commanded the seventh mission in the Apollo space program. But what was that spacecraft known as? I'll give you a little clue on that one. They had a little bit of a problem. So he commanded the seventh mission in the Apollo space program. Okay. Question number seven. What does NASA stand for? So that acronym, N-A-S-A, -A, what does that stand for? Okay, question number eight. How long does it take for the moon to orbit the Earth? So approximately, how long would it take? And I'll give you some days. So is it 27, approximately 27 days, 28 days or 29 days for the moon to orbit the Earth? How many days approximately do you think that is? Number nine, in the 2019 film, Lego Movie 2, the second part, what type of aliens arrive in the Lego universe and threaten destruction? So there's some types of aliens that arrive in the Lego universe. What are they? To be fair, Mr. Skinner might not actually know that one. And question number 10, the last one on this round. What space telescope celebrated its 30th birthday this year? So it's a very famous telescope and it celebrated 30 years this year. What's that called? OK, right. So that's our space and stars uh, round out the way. So this second round is all about the landmarks slash local knowledge of Colville. So Mrs Johnson said she might go for a ride round in a car this afternoon because she was a bit unsure about all the landmarks in Colville. But um, we'll see how well she does. So what I think I'll do then I'll give you some time, a few minutes, if you want to look through the pictures. And then just jot down um, where you think where you think they are really. Okay, so there's 10, 10 pictures there. So have a go, and then uh, we can move on to the third round in a few minutes.
Okay, I'll just give you another few, uh, another minute maybe, and then we can move on to round, to round three. Okay then, right, we'll move on. So this round is all about holidays because we can't we can't really go on a holiday at the minute because we're, we're just a little bit stuck. So I thought we'd have a round all about um, seaside, holidays, holiday destinations, that type of thing, okay? So um, question number one. Which town is the largest holiday resort on the Yorkshire coast. So which town is the largest holiday resort on the Yorkshire coast? Somewhere that I've been to quite a lot. Sorry about the noise, my dishwasher's just come on, I'm sorry. Right, question number two. What colour coat do you associate with Butlin's entertainers? So what colour coat do you associate with Butlin's entertainers? And I think we might have somebody playing along who likes to go to Butlin's. I know there's um, a very special young man and his sister who love going to Butlin's. So hopefully they will know that one. Question number three. What is the name of the largest roller coaster at Blackpool Pleasure Beach? It used to be, when it was first built, it was called the Pepsi Max. It's got a different name now. So what is that uh, big roller coaster called? Okay, question number four. Which coastal town was said to be partly the inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula novel? So there was a story written about Dracula and there was a town, and that's up in the north of England as well, a seaside town that was said to be um, the inspiration for the Dracula novel. This is somewhere where I go a lot as well. They do absolutely lovely fish and chips. Okay, question number five. In which county is Skegness? In which county is Skegness? And I bet lots of you have been to Skegness to the seaside there. And you will again one day. Question number six. If you landed at Alicante Airport, which country would you be in? So if you're on a plane and it landed at Alicante, which country would you have landed in? Number seven. What word would you use in French for beach? So if you were saying beach in French, how would you say that? The beach in French. Okay. 
Question number eight. This is one for the younger participants, maybe that are taking place. Uh, sorry, taking place, taking part. Number eight. What is the name of the ice cream cone? And it's usually made with that um, soft Mr. Whippy ice cream. And it's got a flake stuck into it. And the ice cream is usually vanilla flavoured. What would you call one of those? You went up to the ice cream man. What would you ask for? Question number nine. Which is the largest of the Canary Islands? Again, you might have been here on your holidays. Which is the largest of the Canary Islands? And the last question in this round, question number 10. Acapulco is a holiday resort in which country? Acapulco is a holiday resort in which country? And I'm just going to ask Mrs. Johnson if you can hear me all right now, Mrs. Johnson, because I think we had a little bit of problem with the sound there. We had a bit of a, a moment. So if Mrs. Johnson can just message me to say everything's OK. That would be really good. Thank you. So if you can, uh, we'll just have a little pause for a moment. So if you want to look, if you want to have a little look back at your um, landmarks in Colville. I wonder if Mrs. Johnson's got all of those. Now, I know Mrs. Price knew them all, so uh, that's OK. And then we'll move on to our round four in a moment. Yeah, Mrs. Johnson's just messaged to say everything's good, so that's fine. We always have a little panic. But you can't hear what I'm saying. Oh, probably just not listening, but that's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Right then, so round four, I've gone for, because um, it's the celebration on Friday for the VE Day celebration um, memorial thing. Um, so round four, I've gone for a VE Day slash World War Two sort of mixture. So um, a, couple, a, a few of them are about the actual um, day itself and some of them a little bit about the war um, and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully there's a good mix in here. And if we've got any year sixes um, who are taking part, I know you did some, some lovely work with Mr Skinner about the Second World War. So maybe you will know some of these answers. So we will see. Right then. So round four, question number one. What does VE stand for? So the initials, the V and the E, we, we talk about it as VE Day. What does that stand for? Question number two. Who was Britain's Prime Minister in May 1945 when... Um, when the victory came, who was Britain's Prime Minister in May 1945 when, when the, the victory came and the war finished? And if you're in year six, you definitely should know that one. Question number three is a bit random. And um, you may have to guess this one. But what day of the week was the, that VE day in 1945? What day of the week was it? It's a bit tricky, isn't it? You could, you could guess. Not that many choices to be made. Mm. 
What day of the week do you think it was? Question number four. Who was the monarch? Who was the reigning monarch during World War II in Britain? Who was the monarch on the throne at that time? You often see lots of um, pictures of him walking around with his, um, with um, on the bomb sites and things like that. Who was Britain's monarch? Move on to number five then. What was the name of the young girl who kept a diary um, during the war? So she was um, she was Jewish and she had they had to flee Germany and she kept a diary of things that had been happening and she had to they had to hide away. What was her name? Number six, in the novel, Good Night, Mr. Tom, and probably some of you have seen that as a film as well, what's the name of the character, the young boy who is evacuated and he has to go and live with um, Tom, Mr. Tom, Tom Oakley? What's the name of the character? It's a lovely, lovely story. Question seven. During the war, when the war was on, the government were um, anxious that some of the food, some food um, uh, might run out because there were lots of um, things that would come through um, by ships and, and um, it was very difficult to get some foodstuffs into the country. So people had to have a special book um, with coupons in it and they had to exchange those for food. So what was that called? What was that book called? What, what, what is it when you have to have the food um, just um, where it's not available for everybody. It feels a bit like that now sometimes, doesn't it? When you go, it did a bit, a bit when all that um, panic buying was on. This happens sometimes when you went into the supermarket, you could only take a couple of something. What's that called? Okay, question number eight. How many people gathered um, at Piccadilly Circus in London to celebrate that VE Day in 1945? And I'll, I'll let you have it to the closest um, 10,000. So um, everybody came out onto the streets. Um, it was such a massive celebration, such a relief that it was finished. And you see lots of pictures of people gathering together. How many people do you think were gathered in Piccadilly Circus in London to celebrate? Um, the ending of that of the Second World War to the nearest ten thousand. Right, so thinking about where you couldn't get all the foodstuffs that you wanted to, and because sugar um, would be in short supply, so you had only a small amount of chocolate, which just sounds horrific, doesn't it? But there was, it was only, you could only have a small amount of chocolate each week per person had to go and exchange a coupon. So, how much chocolate do you think you were allowed? Per person. So I'm looking here for um, um, the mass. The, how much would it weigh, this, this chocolate that you were allowed per week? You can go grams or you could go ounces. I have both. 
answers here. What do you think you were allowed? And it wasn't very much. Cadbury's made their own bar, apparently, with powdered milk. Eesh. Nasty. So how much do you think you would be allowed a week? And the last question in this round, name the British singer who was famous for the wartime hit We'll Meet Again. So we know that that one's been uh, re-released. That was one of the questions last week. But there was a lady and she's still alive. She's quite elderly now, but she's still alive. And she had this song, she recorded this song, We'll Meet Again. Who was that person? Okay, so that's our VE Day slash World War II round. I can't wait to see the medals and things that you're going to be doing um, for Friday. It's going to look brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And remember, if you're having a, um, a bit of a... Um, a street party you might be we're, we're, uh, I know in our street we're going to have a, at the end of your drive kind of thing if you're going to do that as well and you, and you want to send pictures in of you celebrating that would be brilliant because Mrs Johnson will put them all onto the onto the Facebook page group right then so on to the final round which is the general knowledge round so we've got 10 questions here so the first one is which first name is shared by the cricketer Flintoff and the tennis player Murray? So what is their first name? The cricketer, the, the, the guy plays cricket and his surname is Flintoff and there's a tennis player and his surname is Murray. So what's their first name? Question number two, who reigned, got lots of questions about monarchs for some reason, who reigned as the UK monarch between June 1837 and January 1901? So this was somebody that was on the throne for a very long time. So which UK monarch was that? Question number three. Joe Biden served as a vice president of the United States under which president? So which president did Joe Biden serve under as the vice president? Do you think? Okay, question number four. What does the Beaufort scale measure? What does the Beaufort or a Beaufort scale measure? That's one of those ones where you think, oh, yeah, I've heard of that and I can't quite remember. What do you think it measures? Question number five. What is the name of the Yeti in the 2018 film Smallfoot? So what is the name of the Yeti? I can hear Mr. Skinner groaning as I give that question out. What is the name of the Yeti in the 2018 film Smallfoot? Question number six. What is the name of the head judge on Britain's Got Talent? So the name of uh, the head judge, the, the person in charge on Britain's Got Talent. Right, question number seven. So if you're doing it on a laptop, you've got to not look at your keyboard now. You've got to, you're just not allowed to look at your keyboard. You've got to just look um, straight at something else. And I want you to tell me, if you can, 
what is the symbol above the uh, the key with the five digit on it? So there's um, the key with the five digit on, and then above that, there's a symbol on the same key. What is that symbol? And if you are on your laptop, I know it's too difficult not to look, isn't it? Too tempting. Question number eight. How many ghosts visit Scrooge in A Christmas Carol? So in the novel A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which has absolutely got to be my most favourite film, uh, film, book ever, 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 ever. Um, absolutely love it. So how many ghosts visit, visit um, Ebenezer Scrooge? I went to visit one of the houses Charles Dickens lived in a few years ago at Christmas, and it was just one of my most favourite things ever. Right, question number nine. And if you're in year four, you should be able to get this one. And year six and year five. What does the Roman numeral D stand for? So in the Roman numerals, D, what does that stand for? And question number 10, the last one. Which tree's leaves are the symbol of the National Trust? So the National Trust that owns lots of properties and gardens and parks, they have their symbol. And it's um, it's a leaf. What what tree would that leaf come from? Right. OK, so that's the end of our quiz. So, again, if you're playing with um, two different teams in your in your house or whatever, I don't know, or you just want to uh, just mark them, then that's fine. We can go through go through the answers and see how you get on. So it's all just they're, sorry. They're all just worth a point today. So that would be 50 points. And then at the end, if you want to um, do the usual and send them in to Mrs. Johnson, who will put them onto our weekly weekly leaderboard and then our cumulative leaderboard. And we'll see how everybody's getting on. So number one, uh, back at round one, was the space and stars questions. So who was the leader or is the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy? And it's Peter Quill. He is the leader. Question number two. In Star Wars, Chewbacca is a Wookiee. The big furry bear is a Wookiee. Number three, the sixth planet from the sun is Saturn. And an exoplanet, that's um, a planet that is outside of our solar system. So an exoplanet is outside our solar system. So that was number four. Question number five. If somebody asked to be beamed up in Star Trek, they would need to have a transporter. And Jim Lovell, he commanded Apollo 13. That just never quite got there, sadly. But they did all get back safely, so that's obviously the main thing. Apollo 13. Number seven, what does NASA stand for? That stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Not that easy to say. National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Well done if you got that wrong right. 
How long does it take for the moon to orbit the Earth? Approximately, it's approximately 27 days. It's just over 27 days. And in the Lego movie, Duplo aliens came to threaten destruction to the Lego universe. Goodness me. And the space, um, sorry, the telescope that celebrated its 30th birthday is the, um, the Hubble telescope. Hubble telescope. Right then. So then we've got the um, Colville picture round. If I can just get my pictures so I can have a look. So these were um, just pictures that were cropped to see if you could work out where they were. So hopefully, Mrs. Johnson, you've got some of these right. So number one, that's a picture of the, uh, the council offices, which are on uh, Whittick Road, I believe. Council offices there. It's quite a nice building. And number two, that's the lake, Hermitage Lake at the Re Recreational Ground. Or Recreation Ground even. Number three is the Clock Tower. And number four is the uh, Victoria's Biker Pub. Number five was a bit sneaky. Um, but that is um, is the Marlene Reed Center, just the top of the roof of the Marlene Reed Center. Now, number six is um, Stevenson College, the side of uh, Stevenson College. And number seven is um, if you're in the Cross Country Club and you uh, run on a Thursday with uh, me and Mrs. Jakes and Mr. Skinner, that is uh, Swannington Incline. Number eight, wow, well, we should all have got number eight right, hopefully. Number eight is, of course, um, our school, our school roof from the playground. And it's still there, our school. Number nine is um, Hermitage, uh, the Leisure Centre at Hermitage. And the last one is the, um, the library, um, the uh, Children's Centre. It's outside the library with the lady and the little child. OK, so hopefully Will and Mrs Johnson, you've managed to get some of those right between you. And hopefully lots of you other people got them all right. OK, so that was our round two with the landmarks. And then this next round was all about our holidays to try and uh, give us a bit of hope, a bit of optimism that we will get back on our holidays and we will be able to enjoy the sunshine and, and time with our families out and about. So number uh, one, the largest holiday resort on the Yorkshire coast is... Um, Scarborough, the largest town up there is Scarborough. Spent many a, uh, a day in Scarborough, fantastic. What colour coat do you, do, you, do you associate with the Butlins entertainers? And I know maybe, maybe that those two uh, young people know the answer to this and it is red, a red coat. Number three, the um, Pepsi Max um, is now called the big one at um, Blackpool, the Pleasure Beach. And again, the coastal town, which is up north, where Bram Stoker's Dracula novel was said to be uh, probably the inspiration for, and that is, of course, Whitby. Whitby with its lovely fish and chips. Number five, um, Skegness is in Lincolnshire. And if you landed at Alicante Airport, you would be in Spain. 
The beach in French is La Plage. I think I've got a gremlin back again. Funny gremlins in my laptop tonight. And if you had uh, your cone with your vanilla flavoured ice cream normally, your Mr. Whippy and your cone in it, you will be having a 99. The largest of the Canary Islands is Tenerife. And Acapulco is in Mexico. Never been to Mexico. Bet the sun is shining there too. Okay. So question, sorry, round number four. So this was all about our VE day and um, the, the World War II um, um, questions about what happened in World War II. So first one was what does VE day, the VE actually stand for? And it's um, victory in Europe. And the prime minister that uh, was, um, our prime minister was Winston Churchill, of course. And I know some of the year sixes, you did some lovely speeches, didn't you? You wrote some um, amazing speeches, a bit like Winston Churchill, when he was delivering those all through the war to help people along. I was very impressed by the work you did there with Mr. S Mr. Skinner. Right, number three, um, it was actually a Tuesday, believe it or not. It was a Tuesday. So if you guessed Tuesday, well done. If you knew Tuesday, then well done even more. 8th of May on, in 1945 was a Tuesday. And the monarch on the throne was George VI. George VI. The young girl who kept a diary during the war, that was Anne Frank. And the character of um, the child who was evacuated and went to live with Tom Oakley, he was called William Beach. It is just such a lovely story, isn't it? If you've, if you've read it or if you've seen the film, it is just beautiful. Um, if you had to um, just get um, exchange your coupons, that would be um, rations, a ration book. Rationing was introduced to try to um, control the food. And in Piccadilly Circus, apparently, when um, it was announced that the war was over, there were, and I said, I'll, I'll give you this to the, um, the closest 10,000. And they were absolutely, apparently there were 50,000 people. 50,000 people, no social distancing going on there at all. 50,000 people rammed into Piccadilly Circus to celebrate. Right, number nine, um, the chocolate ration. So you were allowed a certain amount of chocolate and it had to last the week per person. And it was actually three ounces or 84 grams. three ounces or 84 grams goodness knows if anybody guessed that that's incredible isn't it it's such a tiny amount when you think how much chocolate we eat now and the lady who sang we'll meet again was of course dame vera lynn so vera lynn um i think she's she's over 100 now but uh, she's still with us so that's brilliant And how lovely for her on Friday to celebrate that with everybody, I would think. Okay, so the last round then, the last round of, of answers. This is our general knowledge round. So question number one. The first name shared by the cricketer Flintoff and the tennis player Murray is um, Andrew, not Andy, not Freddie. The, uh, who reigned as a UK monarch? That was Queen Victoria. Joe Biden served as vice president under Barack Obama. And the Beaufort scale that measures the strength of the wind. So 
so in the film um, Smallfoot, in uh, 2018 film Smallfoot, the Yeti is called Migo. Migo. And of course, Simon Cowell um, is the head judge on uh, Britain's Got Talent. Question number seven, if you didn't look at your laptop, um, it's um, on the uh, number five digit, there is a, the symbol above it is a percentage symbol. And in the Charles um, Dickens novel, there were three ghosts who came to visit Scrooge. The Roman numeral D is 500. And the last uh, question, which tree's leaves are the symbol of the National Trust? And the answer to that um, is um, an oak tree. It's an oak leaf um, of the symbol of the National Trust. OK, so that concludes our quiz for this evening. Um, our quiz number six, six weeks we've been doing these. so. Um, Thank you so much for, for taking part again. It, I know I say it every week, but it is lovely that we can all be together um, because I know it's been it's been quite difficult for a lot of people this week. It's got to the point, hasn't it, where um, it's uh, the novelty's worn off completely and it has become quite difficult and people are getting a, um, a little bit of cabin fever and, and wanting to know when they can come back to school. And we, we, we still don't know. We, we've had no news on that. But um, as soon as we know, then we will let everybody else know and um so please you know don't don't be discouraged don't be anxious um i know mrs um, johnson put a post out saying it's not a competition and nobody's behind nobody's doing better than anybody else everybody is just is just where you need to be so so please don't worry and don't stress about it um if if you don't want to do anything if your children are saying i, I don't want to do this i can't do this just let them do things in their own way be as creative as you can because it really really doesn't matter um we just want you to be safe and um stay sane really um so that when we do get back into school we, your children are going to and, and if children that you're watching we need you to be able to start to learn again so please please don't stress about it and um, you're doing an amazing job okay so thank you and if you want to um send any of those things into mrs johnson then um she'll pop them onto our facebook page and we can have um, a parade on friday so thank you very much uh, stay safe and um we'll see you next week okay see you later bye <laughs>